Why would I knowingly run a 650 horsepower engine through an orifice this small? In the process of designing our new STR turbocharger, we have to test how they perform on emissions equipped trucks because we sell them for LMLs and other emissions equipped trucks. To do that, we have to duplicate the pressure in the DOC or post turbine, same as on a truck at that power level. Well, our test engine doesn't have a canister on it, so we use innovative methods. In today's Diesel Insight, we show you the difference between running an engine through a 5 inch straight pipe at 650 horsepower and through a full emission system, or simulated emission system. Because we have our trucks instrumented, we know how much pressure there is post turbine at a certain power level. On the emissions equipped L5P and LML, that's somewhere in the range of 10 to 15 psi depending on horsepower output. Now, to use our engine dyno to simulate this load, we've taken the blast gate and adjusted it so that we see a similar peak pressure post turbine. This allows us to quickly test prototypes on our engine dyno. How is this test going to work? Well, first, Dan's going to run the engine dyno with our LML turbocharger on our test engine. Open exhaust. We're going to collect all the data that's power, drive pressure, boost, EGT, lambda, and then all the PIDs along with EFI Live. We're also going to collect pressure in the downstream exhaust or post turbine. From there, we're going to adjust the blast gate just to the right spot so that we get the targeted 15 psi in the blast gate, so 15 psi post turbine. This sounds like a lot of pressure. Well, it's sometimes what we see at full throttle, full load on these trucks. Then we're going to run the engine again, collect all the data, and do the analysis with you live to show you exactly what the difference is A to B, exhaust, no exhaust. Now we've run the dyno and I have all the data in front of me here from three different runs. I have the five inch open exhaust, I have the max pressure at about 12 PSI and the max pressure over, I wanna say 15 PSI, right about 15 PSI. So let's talk about the open exhaust run here and what PIDs we're looking at. Upper left hand corner I have RPM, throttle position, then dyno horsepower and mass airflow on the right. That's right, I have the dyno horsepower looped into the EFI Live data logger, so I can actually see horsepower in the data log, which is awesome. Second row, the pink line is exhaust gas temperature, and the green line is turbocharger vane position. So this is going to give us an idea of how much vane position is in the turbocharger in order to reach that boost number. What boost number? Let's look at the group below. Orange, boost. Blue, desired boost. You can see they track together pretty well, which means our turbo is able to achieve the boost that we're asking from it. In order to do so, it has to use exhaust gas pressure. That's the green line. You'll see that change. And along with that green line changing, you'll also see in some of the other logs, this pink line on the bottom here, which is the pressure after the turbine. That is very low in this log because it is a five inch open exhaust. Now what I like to do is, well, I like to look at the peaks, right? See, so this, this truck's, this engine's making about 670 horsepower peak. So we're pushing this thing, 681. Let's just take a sample for the sake of comparison from 2,500 RPM up to 3,200 RPM. That's a good power sample because that's where the truck shifts and then extends down to at the completion of the shift. So this would be like a full throttle pass, boom gear, boom gear, boom, 3,200 RPM. So interesting to note on this open exhaust, over the average of our 2,500 RPM to 3,200 RPM, we're averaging about 665 horsepower, 663. We're averaging a vane position of 22, an exhaust gas pressure of 66, and a downstream pressure of zero. Boost is about 37, 38 PSI. So we're targeting 52, which is 37. Drop a couple pounds off because we got some bad air out there in the dyno cell. So call it high 30s, 37, 38 pounds of boost, which is pretty typical on a 64. So let's switch. We'll knock this one down and we'll move over to our other runs. All the same PIDs, and I'm just going to target that same batch, right, 2,500 up to 3,200 RPM. And then on this other run, this is the 15 PSI on my right, I'm going to select those same cells. So the 11 PSI, let's just verify that, we see a peak of 11.79. So this one on my left is a peak of about 12 PSI post turbine, and this one on my right is a peak of about... 14.6, so call it 15 PSI post turbine. This is really 
similar to how an emissions equipped truck would run at the 650 plus horsepower level. And I said 650 plus because upper right hand corner, you're seeing average 652 horsepower. This is the worst pull. Remember, this is 15 PSI of pressure post turbine. This next one, 651. So these two are right on top of each other despite the difference in pressure on the turbine. That's bizarre. Wasn't expecting that. Let's see what else tracks. Okay, so vane position. If you remember, the average vane position in the open exhaust was 22. In the 12 PSI exhaust, average vane position is 40. So we are having to close the vanes tighter to get that exhaust turbine to work, to get the pressure, get the shaft speed, get the airflow. 43 in our 15 PSI test. So that tracks, right? Turbo vane position has to go up because we have higher post turbine pressure. Exhaust gas temperature. Now EFI Live is not cooperating here, but I'll just take a, let's just say 2,800 RPM. Exhaust gas temperature is 1535. 2,800 RPM. Exhaust gas temperature is 1523. Basically identical exhaust gas temperature. I would think the exhaust gas temperature would go up significantly on the emissions equipped truck because of the extra drive pressure. Let's just check real quick. 2800 RPM on the straight pipe truck. What's the EGT? 1534. Wow, 1535, 1534, 1523. One of those has a five inch straight pipe. One of those has 12 PSI drive pressure. One of those has uh, 15 PSI, sorry, post turbine pressure. That's kind of interesting. How does that translate into exhaust pressure? 12 PSI engine, average exhaust pressure, 78.47. Now that includes ambient, so subtract 14 out of that to get true drive pressure on the gauge. With the 15 PSI restriction, our exhaust pressure jumps up to 83. So it looks like what happens is the downstream pressure in the turbine translates directly into the up pipes. So the extra four PSI that was behind the turbine gets transferred directly into the up pipes. That makes sense to me. The proof's in the pudding here. I mean, this is the data. What I discovered was shocking. I truly expected there to be less airflow, higher exhaust gas temperatures, significantly more work being done by the turbine, and just lack of ability to produce that power. What we saw was surprising though. We only lost about one and a half percent on the power side, so 665 to 652. Yeah, we saw higher drive pressure. Yes, we saw more vane activity, but we did not see exhaust gas temperatures go up significantly. And we saw the turbocharger still continue to be able to move 555 grams of airflow. That's pretty significant. If you enjoy these videos and you would like to support the channel, support our content, and are curious about the products we feature here, give us a buzz. We have a bunch of knowledgeable guys on staff who are happy to talk to you about your truck and modifications. We can be reached at 815-568-7920. We design, build, and test in-house a full line of turbochargers for Ram, GM, and Ford trucks, along with tuning options to match.